Welcome to Macro Monday on Investec Focus Radio SA, a podcast about what's driving global and local markets. I'm Chris Holdsworth, Chief Investment Strategist at Investec Wealth and Investment. Every Monday morning, I'll update you on key developments from the past week and what you need to know about the week ahead. If you'd prefer to watch a video with the graphs and charts I referred to in the podcast, just go to investec.com forward slash Macro Monday. Good morning. This week, we'll have a look at that US GDP print, which came out last week. We'll have a look at core PCE inflation, which is the inflation series at the Fed targets. And finally, we'll have a look at the polls in SA and how accurate they were at the last election. We're going to start off with that GDP print in the US. US GDP for Q1, the growth rate came out at 1.6%. It was well below the consensus forecast of 2.5%. In fact, it was the biggest miss in three years. And as a result of that, the U.S. market opened down around about 1% or so. However, if you dig a little bit, the number wasn't as disappointing as you would think at first glance. And I think that in part explains why the U.S. market subsequent to that initial decline ground up during the day. If you look at domestic demand, it was still pretty strong at around about 3% or so. The reason that GDP number was at 1.6 instead of 3 is that net exports and the declines in inventory took off from the GDP numbers. And those two series, net exports and changes in inventory, are pretty volatile. They're down a couple of quarters. They could be up the next quarter or so. This number that we're referring to at the moment, which is domestic demand, is somewhat more stable through the cycle and gives a better indication of core economic activity. And that, that remains strong. So the net result of that was an initial decline in the market and a subsequent upward revision. The primary reason why domestic demand is still as strong as it is in the U.S. is that U.S. consumers are still spending more than they earn. And that can only come about in a couple of ways. Either they're accessing credit, and we know that credit taps have been tightened somewhat in the U.S., so it's unlikely to be that, or they're accessing savings. And those excess savings, which were built up during COVID, are still being depleted. This shows that they're still around. And at some point, something has to give. We can't expect U.S. consumers to continue to spend at the current rate. So growth, underlying growth, is still relatively resilient at this point. We still do expect a slowdown over the coming year or so as those excess savings are depleted. And then we'll land up with growth rates of sort of 1.5% or so, but not simply due to lower net exports and inventory adjustments due to lower domestic demand. Core PCE inflation also came out last week, and the Fed would not have been pleased with this number. Core PCE inflation came out at 2.8%. The Fed targets this number to be at around 2% or so. The worrying bit of the data is what's happened of late. If you look at the six-month rate for core PCE inflation, it's running at 3%, and that's picked up quite a bit over the last couple of months. The three-month rate is running at 4.4%. So there's absolutely no evidence that the latest inflation data is consistent with the Fed's target of 2%. And that puts them in a tight spot. If it is the case that growth decelerates, as we expect, they have limited scope for cutting rates, given that core PC inflation has been re-accelerating. And as a result of that, we expect going forward, like we saw initially with that GDP print, we think that bad news is going to be bad news for the market. Often it's the case that bad news is good news because it's expected that the Fed will respond and cut. But given their limited ability to immediately cut, we think in the interim, bad news is likely to translate to weaker markets. Where do we think core PC inflation is likely to go? Well, even if core PC inflation, the monthly rate, was to drop to be in line with the 20-year rate overnight, we're still not going to see core PC inflation down to 2% in the near future. It gets to 2.5% by around about May or so. And the Fed has previously guided they don't need it to be at exactly 2% before they're willing to cut. But it still remains quite meaningfully above 2%, sort of 23 to 2.4%, all the way out until September. So it's a, a very gradual deceleration, even under optimistic assumptions. And as a result, it's unlikely to be a case that the Fed cuts immediately. The market expects the Fed to only cut from around about September or so, actually a little bit later in total, the market's pricing in about 1.3 cuts, so call it one to two cuts by year end, which is materially less than was expected at the beginning of the year. Switching to SA, we've had an updated poll come out over the weekend, and the average of the polls indicate the ANSI gets just a bit above 40%, the DA gets around 24%, the EFF and MK around 10 And that raises the question as to how accurate are the polls? Well, last time they, they were fairly accurate, within a couple of percent or so.
And that tells us with some degree of certainty that the ANC gets less than 45 and we land up with a coalition government. And we've done a fair bit of research around what the literature says and what we've seen across emerging markets where there have been coalitions. And, and the one consistent result is that we tend to have higher deficits where there are coalition governments as a result of coalition partners attempting to finance their mandates and their own projects. And the net result of that is post elections will probably have to revise up our debt to GDP forecast, but we're going to wait for the result before we're able to do that. In the interim, I think we can start to pencil in with some degree of certainty uh, that we will land up with a coalition government post May. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week. That's all for this episode. Do tune in next week for more investment insights from me, Chris Holdsworth, and the Investec Wealth and Investment team. If you haven't yet added us to your podcast feed, you can subscribe to Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you listen. And please take a minute to rate our podcast so we can surface this content to the broader investment community. If you want to see the graphs that are referenced in the podcast, you can watch a video version of this recording at investec.com forward slash macro monday. The views expressed are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily represent the views of Investec Wealth and Investment International and should not be taken as advice, guidance or recommendation. Investec Wealth and Investment International, a member of the JSE Equity, Equity Derivatives, Currency Derivatives, Bond Derivatives and Interest Rate Derivatives Markets, an authorized financial services provider and a registered credit provider.